Thank you for watching this video from the Center for European Studies at Carleton University. This event was organized by the Center for European Studies and Canada-Europe Transatlantic Dialogue and supported by Carleton University and by grants from the European Union and Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. The views expressed in this video are solely those of the presenter and do not reflect the views of the European Union, Center for European Studies, and Carleton University. Okay, so this is my home, as it now looks, with the other eight panels not visible uh, that are on the roof. Um, we are one of many microfit projects here in Ontario, uh, and um, I'm glad to say that for each of the years since we put this on, um, we're actually energy positive over the course of the year. We're actually generating, or at least electricity positive, we're actually generating more electricity in my home as a family um, than we're consuming over the course of the year. Um, this, for example, was last week. Note the really rainy days. There were several of those yesterday on the right. And this little gizmo means that I can sit in any potentially boring conference or city council meeting and I can see what the weather's like outside. You see what those little dips are like? That was yesterday. That's when a cloud came over. Um, it's a little toy for some of us. <laughs> but what it shows is lifetime 11.3 megawatt hours. That's, uh, that's under three years now we've uh, had those up. And that's one house out of hundreds of thousands of houses in one city out of thousands of cities in the world. That's one rooftop and one wall. Uh, and it is an example of the kinds of things that an individual, individual, individual family uh, can and should be doing within their means. And we'll hear within means and other ways of doing it. We'll hear from Janice about doing this kind of thing through a cooperative um, as well. Um, but just to show my real street cred, I was the crazy guy who put four panels on his front step um, in 1999 when it was illegal to feed it into the grid, when it cost about, um, oh, I don't know, probably about 200 times more money per kilowatt hour generated, and I had to store the energy in batteries. This was a little photo I took. Um, yeah, it's dating me. Um, I'm standing on my composter with my bicycle underneath my solar panels. <laughs> And what I'm trying to illustrate here is a slide I, I, I used from, from another talk that I often give about empowering people. As much as I as an individual am doing all these things and doing my best, this, my act of riding my bike and taking the bus more than driving a car, of composting, of making my house as energy efficient as possible and putting up those panels, they are only a small part and they only ever will be a small part of where we need to go as a society and as a city because the big changes I can't get up in the morning and say I'm going to build an LRT, a light rail system. I can't get up in the morning and say the shopping mall I'm about to go to, I'm going to make, you know, four times more energy efficient. There are much, there are many other actors and much bigger actors that also have to come to play. So while I'm constantly advocating individuals doing what they can, I am equally saying, and then talk to your politician, vote. Um, talk to the store owner, write your letter, because it's the big actors pushed by all the small actors um, that are going to get us somewhere. That was the last slide, and you don't need to look at that, nor do I, for the whole talk. So, um, it was mentioned yesterday, municipal governments play a really important role, um, even though their powers to act are limited. And I'll talk a bit about the, the limitations. Um, we've got limited financial capacity, for example. Municipalities in Canada get a really small part of the revenue pie. So that drastically limits what a municipal council can choose to do without calling on the other levels of government who've got most of your tax dollar um, in order for us to make big actions like building that light rail system. Um, it was noted, or perhaps I would say postulated, that it's easier to act at the municipal level. Um, a yes and no, and I'm going to get into that. It, it, outwardly, it may seem that way, and yet it's more complicated. Um, yeah, so I want to give some real examples um, for me as a councillor, now chair of the Environment Committee, um, on what we are doing as a city in transitioning to renewable energy and dramatically um, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so local governments have been amongst the most active or at least vocal levels of government uh, in this country for many years. Um, and that is key. Uh, as we're exploring here in these two days, um, 
what's the, the, the disconnect between what we're saying we're doing and what we're actually doing. And I loved um, one of our earlier presenters, Elizabeth Schwartz, who pointed out that, yeah, you know, if, if we turned off the lights at City Hall for Earth Day or Earth Hour counts as an initiative towards climate change and our goals, and it's sort of a, a one of 16 that we did this year, it's a bit of a sad commentary, uh, you know, there better be a much longer list and much more important ones if we're ready to show we're making progress. Um, so despite the lack of action from federal and provincial governments, often we have seen um, very ambitious goals, somewhat less ambitious and yet still quite significant plans coming from many municipalities uh, across the country. Toronto, for example, was one of the first in the world in 1989 to make uh, a significant commitment and, uh, and, and continues to lead in some areas in terms of, of what they've been doing as a city. Um, there are over 200 local governments actively engaged in energy and emissions planning um, and many of the early adopters working through the Federation of Canadian Municip Municipalities are now on to a second generation of, uh, of plans. Um, the City of Ottawa uh, put in place its own climate change plan um, that expired in 2012, was renewed um, 2013 and, uh, and approved, um, but little of that plan has actually been put into action and little of it is, even less of it, is fully funded to do the work. There are four or five of the key recommendations that City Council in July approved funding to go forward with, but we're only just going forward with this now. Um, so why then, um, if plans are mostly hot air, am I looking for a new plan or a new strategy? I actually pushed for and had approved a renewable energy transition strategy. Uh, I recently just threw in that word transition. It was passed by council as a renewable energy strategy, but don't be surprised if it has, you see it from now on with the word transition. That's something that I recognized was key. People get spooked when they are told something like 100% renewable by 2050. Um, they need to see those words transition. They need to understand that this is going to be as gentle a transition as we can make it, not we're shutting down your gas station tomorrow uh, or that car you drive now. You know, we'll be stopped at the border. Um, and that is very important because none of the things that we run on or claim we're going to do will we actually get to implement if we scare the electorate when it comes time to do it. Uh, and even if they might have voted for us knowing it was our platform, yeah, 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 um, when we actually try and do it, we might have those exact same people um, get cold feet, therefore we get cold feet. You have to remember that the politician can only be one small step ahead of their constituents, not a giant leap, despite our wish for so-called leadership politically. Uh, and it is rare that, and rare and risky that you find someone who, uh, who does that. Um, that being said, I did want Ottawa to adopt the target right now of 100% renewable by 2050. Um, the appetite around City Hall was not there to adopt that target, so we will be developing that renewable energy transition strategy, and I hope it will recommend. 100% by 2050, um, but I'm just one of many actors uh, in developing that, and that's really one of the key messages I, I want to get to here. Um, I'm going to skip over a whole lot of this stuff to get what I think is uh, most interesting. What is the role that a city can play? Um, city as convener, city as data provider, and city as strong corporate partner are three that I want to highlight here. The city as convener, I talked about um, me just being one of the players, the city is just one of the players. In fact, typically, the corporation of the city of Ottawa, as we call it formally, you know, City Hall, as you would know it, often only accounts for about 2 or 3% of the emissions in a city and the energy consumption. Uh, you know, that's 8 or 10 significant buildings and a whole lot of small ones uh, in a massive city, uh, among other things the city directly controls. And there is um, great nervousness from mayors and councillors, including my own colleagues, when a city makes bold, uh, sets targets and goals for people who we don't control. I will hear, I'm not telling stories out of school, when Mayor Watson says, whoa, we're, we're making a commitment on behalf of Carleton University, on behalf of people who live in Canada. We can't do that. We can only make a commitment for what the city of Ottawa will do. Now, 
we need to be much bolder as a city itself, but a real transition is going to involve all of those actors, uh, and that's where the city plays the, it really is the only, the city government uh, is the only body that can be that convener. Uh, and I think that's that's key to it is a key role, but it's important to remember um, that uh, that there are so many other important players to bring together. Um, the city is data provider. We often hear people don't really know the full details of uh, a hydro uh, electricity uh, consumption in this city or gas use. Who's using it? How much are they using it? When are they using it? Typically, our utilities control that information. They don't make it, whether they see it as competitive or privacy or other reasons, uh, just plain don't want to get around to sharing that. Um, it's important that the city be able to um, get that data and make it available, even if it's in such a general way that privacy um, is being respected because most other players they can't get at that data and without the data without knowing who is consuming what who is emitting what when and where um, we can't build a solid useful plan to change that and to track whether we've made those changes uh, and the city is a strong corporate partner yes that's where we must walk the talk that's where we have no authority to be convening everybody in a room all the utilities the major universities the hospitals the school boards representatives, local community associations, and others, and saying, you need to be 100% renewable by 2050. And how are you doing, City of Ottawa? Um, so it's absolutely critical that the government itself in its own operations be um, making a as good progress as you're expecting from others, and I would argue at least slightly better uh, to play a leadership role. So Ottawa is embarking on this process now of developing that renewable energy transition strategy. I've, in fact, I, I chose to um, bring Ottawa's work, the city of Ottawa's work, and hopefully the broader community, careful with that, um, focusing on a renewable energy transition strategy because we were getting so bogged down in the climate change, and I hesitate to say debate, I don't think there is a debate, it's a lot of disinformation, um, but we were constantly being bogged down, is it happening, who's being affected, when is it going to get really bad, etc. cetera. Um, this was part of my way of saying, we must move to completely renewable energy by some time in the near future. Let's focus on that. It will then bring along with it the reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. It will bring along with it climate protection. Yes, I also like that word. I noticed that Hanover had, uh, the city of Hanover had a similar uh, uh, department with that name. I'll work on Ottawa. Um, and that does get to work on Ottawa. It gets me to my final point, staff capacity. Um, just how many people are there in the city of Ottawa dedicated to climate change? Ooh, that's an off awfully small department. Um, that's a zero, by the way. Um, we have people who are simultaneously developing our urban forest management plan uh, and um, a whole range of other, oh, our, our, our source separated organics uh, audits being done in there and, and now thrown at them renewable energy transition strategy. It's, it's the exact th same three or four people. Uh, and so um, I suppose putting a title, the Department for Climate Protection, I better get a department first. Uh, <laughs> but it shows how under resourced in Ottawa, typical of most cities, it really is. Oh, we've got some people who can do that, and we'll hire some consultants. Great. At a certain point, yes, let's hire some consultants with specific expertise. But let's at least have a couple of people in the city who are dedicated to that, and we don't have that uh, at the moment. So that shows you, in fact, in the last council, we lost some of them. And here I'll get a bit into the, the politics before I dive right into my concluding set of, uh, of points. Um, I've only got two minutes. Okay, I better not do that. Um, the political situation until very recently had been one where I would just almost think, why bother? You've got a federal government that denies it's happening, that doesn't care, that isn't offering funding. Um, I chose to focus my attention on transportation and on urban planning issues rather than tackle climate change head on uh, because I felt we could make some headway that way anyway. So with only two minutes, what can I do? Um, we've already heard... <laughs> Save the rest for discussion. Ask me questions. Councillor, what were you going to say when you ran out of time? <laughs> Little political trick. Um, what are the key areas where we are emitting? Uh, and that is, as we've seen some charts already, transportation, buildings and the built infrastructure. Right there, you're at over 
If you were to tackle two areas, just do those two areas and you've got most of it. We have very little industry. So while that pie chart for Ontario had a big chunk of industry, it ain't in Ottawa. Um, very small amount. So that means we can focus on, uh, on certain areas. Our electricity uh, consumption, or at least emissions from electricity, are significant, but way below those others, as are waste. So if you were to have a second tier, it would be electricity and waste. Um, point I have to make right now, conservation and efficiency is where most of our energy needs to go. We frequently love to leap to the technology. How many solar panels do we need to be 100% renewable? And I would say a whole lot less if we consume 50% of what we're consuming now than if we don't change what we're consuming. Uh, so that's a cost saver, it's way more efficient, it's way faster, and it creates local jobs, which is when it comes to selling this whole initiative, local jobs is key. In conservation, in efficiency, and even in, for the most part, in renewables, those are rare examples we can say, um, you can't outsource to someone in Hyderabad putting panels on my roof or blowing insulation into my home or changing my windows. They're local, and that's important. Um, quickly then, um, better planning we've heard about, and yes, I would love to get into a conversation of what we just heard from, um, uh, from Matthew. It's a very important one. He mentioned about... Uh, Intensification is critical, so better planning and intensification, but the way intensification has happened, the types of projects that have come forward, I would argue are leading to less density, are leading to, uh, we are seeing $1.4 million mega houses with two people living in it, whereas a small family of five surrounded by green space with mature trees used to be on that same lot. We are seeing a tower of 20 people where everybody has a car and a parking space underneath ostensibly as intensification. So the problem is, time is up. Um, <laughs> she'll give me the 30 seconds. So yes, better planning uh, is an area, a, a key area for us, focus on, uh, on transit, uh, on electrification of transit. Light rail uh, is now well underway, the construction here in the city, that will key. If there's one big initiative that Ottawa is now working on that will make uh, be a game changer, it will be that, but only if it is supported by walkable, cyclable transit connections to get to the rail, not just drive your car to, to that station. Complete streets policy, ask me more about that when you get a chance. Um, we're doing quite well on that finally now. Uh, and I know I have to stop. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you.